Grand Blue Fantasy vs. Rising has finally released to a fanfare from the FGC for its plethora of gaming modes, refined gameplay, and even its free-to-play mode that's got a lot of new people playing. However, with the nature of the internet, you can't have the good without the bad. And if you've looked at the Steam page very recently, you can see the reviews are kinda... a little mixed. Currently this game is tilting between mixed and mostly positive reviews. And I kind of want to address some of those today. And what I'm going to do today in this video is we're going to dig through the reasonable complaints and talk about it a little bit more, as well as some of the people that are just yapping on there, you know? People that didn't do their research. So in this first one, it says, the game is hard to learn, not fun learning though. Only recommend for fighting game enthusiasts, not a good one for first timers. So you guys pretty much know how I stand on this one. Uh, this game is a great game for first timers. This game does a lot for people who don't play fighting games regularly. This game has a very expansive training mode that teaches you not only the ins and outs of your character, but how to approach other characters. You also have other modes that don't require you to fight people directly. Um, we actually just played recently the RPG mode and the RPG mode gives you a decent breakdown of how to play the game, even against non-real opponents. And that's really, really cool. And even if you aren't good at fighting games, like I say, you have Grand Bruise mode. Grand Bruise is a literal battle royale mode that is for you to have fun while you're learning. So like once you start getting to that burnout point, you can take a break, get some Grand Bruise in, you know, have, have a great time by yourself or with friends. So honestly, I just feel like this person didn't feel the game out or they didn't have the idea of where to look to get the better tools and understanding of how the game works. This game is absolutely abhorrent. Once again, Arxis proves they have no clue how to make a puppet character balanced. Nier is an abomination that cannot be comprehended by 80% of the cast, and the other 20% are either zoners or are barely able to manage against the character. Arxis, stop making puppet characters when you have zero clue how to balance them. You either make them broken or absolutely weak. Just stop. 2 out of 10, game dead when Tekken 8 drops. <laughs> yeah. So I don't really agree with this one at all. It's a little bit crazy. I mean, Nier is very strong. Like, take a look at this clip from the stream. <laughs> Grabs behind you. You're like, whoa. <laughs> Why can she do all that? And it killed, and it killed. No, it didn't. Bro, what? It should not have killed. Nah, bro. She does a lot for a little. However, that doesn't go without her having some flaws, you know? I think she's gonna be a really strong character, but I don't think she's unbeatable, you know? She's a little bit strong. You've seen some Twitter clips going on on Twitter. Uh, she has a lot going for her, I'll say that much. It's definitely true. But ultimately, I mean, I've played against her multiple times and I've been able to win against her multiple times. It's not like no one has tools to deal with her. Even the easiest character or the hardest character has different tools that they can use to deal with her. And there's also a matchup situation training, so you can lab against some of the things that she has to do. All right, here we go. No lobbies for Grand Brews, so it's no for me. Can't even grief my friends, SMH. The fighting game attached to this game is pretty fun though. <laughs> so I don't know why they put this in not recommended, because they literally just said the fighting game was good, but they had a legit complaint. I think you can still give a positive review but then also have something else to say because they put eight hours in this game. It's not like they don't like the game. I don't think you wouldn't recommend the game because of that. I think you just did that. So the devs looked at it and it got attention, which I don't know. I don't know if giving good reviews is better than giving bad reviews or other way around. But ultimately what this one's saying is very true. I wish there were lobbies for Grand Brews. That is like one of my biggest gripes with the game. Fall Guys took a while to get to that point where they put lobbies in there, but they got lobbies in there. I think Grand Brews would be really good if you had lobbies, but at the same time, I think right now they're waiting on that, just possibly because they want people to be able to go, you know what, let's hop online and there'll be people there for you to play with. I think that's why, but maybe that's not, who knows. Hopefully we get lobbies at a later date. Side games, please make it happen. So this one just says, network problems all over the place. I don't even really want to address this one at all, honestly, but I'm going to do it anyway. Let me address it because why not? Um, I actually got to play against a friend I cannot play in any other fighting game with, and that is my boy Caster. You've seen him in chat, you've seen him, he's my mod, my literal go-to. Uh, shout out to you, Caster, you're in the video. Um, 
But yeah, no, this is the first time I've ever been able to, to play Caster in a fighting game. And that is a big feat to say the least. Like we've played other games with Rollback, we've tried Melty Blood, we've tried Undernight. Um, we haven't tried Strive or anything like that. But this is the first fighting game that I've tried with Caster personally that we've been able to play with each other with. And that's really, really cool. Honestly, that Charlotte is really nice. It definitely cooks me on stream, but I'm gonna get that run back though. And honestly, that's a great feeling to feel. Um, so Caster, shout out to you. We got you going, we get to play. You get to cook on chat. Let's go. <laughs> anyway, next one. Why the what? are there already $90 of DLC? Well, <laughs> uh, I mean, I see where they're coming from, okay? I, I see where they're coming from. Cause I bought the, the early, you know, the deluxe early edition, and that was like 75 off rip. They also have like these voice packs right here and um, you have the horse girl avatars right and those are all legitimate DLC the reason why I'm not counting some of the other things is because of they're just being early unlocks so realistically right if you add this all together it's probably about maybe 75 maybe $80 for like true DLC one of the biggest misgivings of this game and one of the biggest like problems that people are you know going through is they're saying, oh, okay, I want to buy the season pass. It shows the season pass as $50. I'm sure everyone on Twitter has seen it, and everyone on Twitter has also been talking about this thing. I'm here to tell you that that is not how that actually is. So the $50 that you're putting towards is getting you all the stuff that the early deluxe edition has, which I don't think people should be buying the $50 version because, I mean, it's basically early unlocks. And if you would have bought the deluxe edition for like literally $25 more than the base price, you'd spend half as much money and get that exact same stuff. So personally, I don't see that being a legitimate gripe because also when you want to buy the characters later, there's going to be a legit character season pass that is only $35, which is like, what, $5.50 per character since there's six of them. I honestly don't think Psy Games did a great job of actually talking about this. So that's why I'm talking about it in this video because a lot of these things are things that I feel like they should have probably addressed a little bit better. They've been doing a great job of marketing the game overall, but there are like some little things that they've kind of forgot along the way. So I'm here for you guys. Subscribe. <laughs> Speaking of being here for you guys, I'm going to read this one for you guys. I love this game. It's a great game and really fun but the pricing is a big issue. Why is it so expensive in smaller countries? I think they meant countries. They said companies, I read that as companies and then I like countries, autocorrect, brain work. Uh, in Indonesia, the price is ridiculous, more than Tekken. Arxis seems to be increasing the price of their games recently. Uni2 is the same price and Strive got a price increase. Why the Tommy? If this gets fixed, it'll be perfect. As you see, they played a good amount of time. I don't know if they bought the free to play version or if they're on the paid version where they paid the full price for that. I'm sorry that you did, if so. And with this one, I'm going to say, Arxis, y'all gotta change this because I think that same exact thing recently happened with Melty Blood. And I mean, it caused a bigger uproar because they changed the pricing to match where everyone else's pricing was, which makes the game overall a much more expensive game. I'm sure you guys lose money in the end if you guys cut down these prices but if you want your game to last longer and you can make up these sales over time with DLC and things like that you guys gotta cut down on this this is not cool this to me is probably the only legitimate reason I would say downvote the game <laughs> that's probably it this is the like one of the de facto reasons where I'm like I understand what you guys are doing and I mean I support you guys 100% so I mean I want you guys to be able to enjoy the game that we are all enjoying um, until then, I mean, definitely play the free-to-play version. I would say supporting the game without paying is still support, even if you downvoted it, you know what I mean? If I still see 5,000 people playing it every day, right? Then as a developer, I'm like, there is a need for this, right? There's a lot of people playing this free-to-play version. Where are these people playing the free-to-play version from? So if I look and I see it's from a country where we have the price too high, and it shows them on Steam, by the way, that the price is too high. It shows like almost like 200% in some places and some places are actually at 200% pricing. So, uh, yeah, y'all might want to fix that before, you know, those people go away or, you know, other things happen for those people. Like I said, my other countries that are getting messed up by this pricing, I support you guys 100%.
I mean, it sucks that you guys are not, you know, wanting to invest in the game because the price is too high. But I definitely want this fixed for you guys, so hopefully it happens. Anyway, that has been all of the comments that I wanted to go through today. I mean, there's quite a few more than those few. Uh, there's one like about keyboard support, one about our RPG stuff, which you guys can talk about down in the comments below, and I'll definitely address those with you guys down there. But yeah, I just wanted to get a few of the major ones and a few of the silly ones that I don't know why people put those in there. I don't know. Uh, they just did it. But anyway, this has been your boys that are slow. Please let me know what you guys think about what I said in this video down in the comments below. Um, hit that subscribe button if you're new here. And definitely leave a like if you stayed the entire time. Until next time, everybody. Stay healthy, stay happy, and stay groovy. This has been your boy. We out of here. Peace.